United Sierra Zero Radio Golf, Ukrainian station, operator Mikola. It was pretty difficult to cure so into Ukraine on 20 meters. The band is kind of dead today, in this time of the day, lots of noise and stations are weak. But my QCX mini transceiver with its 50 watts of output made a difference and I got 579 from operator Mikola. Yes, you hear me right. QCX mini and it's 50 watts of output, not 5 watts QRP, almost 50 watts of QRO. QCX 50 watts power amplifier from QRP Labs. This combo goes together very nicely. Stay tuned if you wanna know more. So the 50 watts power amplifier from QRP Labs is a nice little power amplifier delivering real 50 up to 50 watts of power into your antenna it's very compact measuring like roughly 14 centimeters by 6 centimeters by almost 4 centimeters the amplifier weighs in some 350 grams if you put together in the same basket QCX mini transceiver, you have 550 grams. Not bad for a portable station delivering full 50 watts and weighing just half a kilo. So this is a massive heatsink installed on, on the aluminum uh, case, which makes the whole construction extremely you know thermally effective you can call CQ and it gets warm but it does not get terribly hot I have it now upside down with the lid off just you know to tell you something about what's what's inside it's a, a very simple power amplifier by by its design it's just two transistors IRF 510 and that's it it's designed to work purely in CW mode and you can't work uh, you can't use it for your SSB for your single sideband work and this is a mono band power amplifier in my case this is a 20 meter power amplifier because I've got 20 meter QCX mini transceiver it could be built for any band from 80 to 10 meters it only depends on the low pass filter you built in there there's no obstacles uh, not to make it multi-band uh, CW power amplifier if you can provide your own low pass filters and the system which will be you know switching low pass filters but as it comes from the factory uh, so you solder in the, the turrets for low pass filter on your band chosen and that's it. I'm not going to go into details today about building the kit. I can only tell that this is a pretty straightforward building. There's no SMD components. All components <clears throat> are through hole, uh, are big enough. Uh, transistors, toroids, resistors. So it just takes, you know, maybe evening or two to complete the soldering so the only thing i want to draw your attention to uh, there are three toroids uh, three three transformers actually in in this power amplifier uh, which needs to be done correctly precisely and maximum attention should be drawn to implementation of these transformers so the transformers T1, T2 and T3, in my experience, is you need to use no less uh, than 60 watts uh, soldering iron for this work and especially for, you know, soldering up, heating up the, uh, the wires of the transformers in order to have them reliably solder up uh, to, the, to the pads of the PCB. This is very important because if you do it wrongly or if you under solder them uh, you have bad contact and the whole power amplifier may not work properly or may not work at all they're wound using 
trifila on one transformer or bifila on the other transformer uh, wire. There are some advices uh, in, the, in the assembly manual on how to make this bifila and trifila wire. I was using my small drill and uh, we can just now jump into my garage and see how was I doing that. To make a bifila and trifila wires for the transformers T2 and T1 is not really that difficult. Just you need, you know, some skills and instruments. I use my mini drill and I use my vise. One end of the trifila wire is in the vise, the other is in my mini drill. And now slowly but reliably you have to rotate the drill until you have the desired result. No need to hurry. All right, so more or less okay. When it starts looking like a nice rope, then it's then it's okay. Or maybe just a little bit more. All right, I think it's okay. Yeah, nice, nice trifila wire for the transformer T1. These transformers actually, the binocular, bifila and trifila, they are one of the most complicated things in the kits like this power amplifier or indeed the transceivers, QDX or QCX or QMX. Well, what can we do? We can't live without toroids. The QCX mini transceiver has got a very nice function which is called QSK. It's when you transmit CW, uh, you switch from transmit to receive after each dit and dot. So you hear what's going on uh, on the ear in between the signs of your CW code. And what is very nice about the QCX 50 watts power amplifier is that the power amplifier has also got the QSK functionality. There's no relays uh, in, the, in this design. All the transmit to receive uh, switching is done by the means of field effect transistors and diodes. So it means the power amplifier may follow the transceiver in the QSK mode. So in the full break-in mode, the LED blinks all the time between dits and dots. It means the power amplifier goes from transmit to receive after each dot. When you transmit, you actually hear all the time the sound coming from the speaker. You hear your transmitted signal tone and you hear also uh, the air, what's, what's going on on the air at the same time. In comparison to semi-QSK, we put semi-QSK on again and in this mode, when you uh, transmit, you go to transmit and the red LED on the PA is always on. You don't hear what you, what's going on in between dits and dots when you transmit. The red LED all the time is on and it uh, goes off to, to the receive mode only when I end transmitting. I suspect this mode is, is most popular among the operators, but as I said, QSK is very useful feature and I'm uh, very glad that this power amplifier can, can do that. So there's one thing to know about this 50 watts power amplifier. As it is fully diode and transistor based switching from receive to transmit 
this power amplifier has got no relay in it at all and which is good as i said you can use the you know, power amplifier even for the qsk operation but there's one thing one glitch or one bug or one feature let's call it uh, normally in the relay based power amplifiers when you switch the power off on the amplifier and it goes off so the relays click and they bypass the power amplifier so your transceiver is getting directly connected to the antenna unfortunately there's not possible to bypass this power amplifier because there's no relay bypassing <laughs> installed in it let me demonstrate so here is the transceiver working here is the power amplifier working we hear some stations working everything's fine antenna is connected to the transceiver through the electronic switch system of the power amplifier now i'm going to disconnect the power from the power amplifier you see antenna does not seem to be connected anymore directly to the transceiver you hear nothing you hear no band noise you hear no stations nothing and if i come back all right you hear the difference so the power amplifier back on again and antenna is also is, is connected back on to the transceiver that's the thing to know you can't bypass the power amplifier if the power is switched off on the amplifier this simple power amplifier is capable of uh, releasing uh, like up to 50 watts of power but uh, it only does this if it's fed uh, by 19 to 22 volts of power supply this is probably the only complication because normally you don't have 20 volts in your shack because because the standard voltage is 13.8 or 14 volts you're getting from the battery packs or you're getting from the from the power supplies so people using successfully the computer laptop power supplies 19 volt laptop power supplies i haven't tried this i'm using my 13.8 uh, volt standard power supply or i can use my battery pack if i'm in the fields and then i use the boost voltage converter uh, which boosts my power supply voltage up to 21 volt in my case and the 21 volt uh, provides very nice 45 watts of power there is great variety of uh, these dc to dc voltage boosters uh, the only thing you have to care about some of them including this one on some frequencies sometimes makes some uh, noise uh, well in my case it's not terrible noise and just on one frequency i noticed so that's okay let's take a look how much current do we draw getting these 45 watts output all right so 5.9 to 6 amps of current so that's okay that's kind of a standard two leds on the front panel greens indicating the power supply on and the red indicates that your ptt line is working properly the ptt system in this power amplifier is not connecting the ptt pin to ground but it takes five volts from the transceiver to power amplifier ptt line in order to make you know transistors and diodes switch so qrp labs did it again very nice job and uh, very nice kit to assemble and very nice power amplifier to use so before you use of course you should put the the lid on uh, fix four screws to here and to here and uh, you have to use this power amplifier 
in this position so and it's actually important you know to use it like this because this is a heatsink and uh, the power transistors the final transistors are uh, are fixed to the case and to the heatsink uh, from this side of PCB so and naturally the heat you know goes up all the time using it in the right way you protect the PCB from getting too hot the only thing you need uh, to have and the only inconvenience probably is the power supply so guys that's it thanks for watching i'm glad ukrainian ham radio operators coming back to the air and we can make a contact with them thank you very much and peace and victory for ukraine that's it for today thanks for watching see you in my next videos 73 this is linas limayanki 2 hotel cheerio